back to the second episode of our season women in new Denton. what you're talking about today i'm sure is something you have heard around whether you're muslim or not and um, it's about not being too ambitious as a muslim woman you know so <clears throat> most people think that islam does not allow people to go out and pursue what they want to pursue in terms of career, business, education, and all that kind of stuff. So, is it really true that Islam does not allow women to be ambitious and achieve what they want to achieve? Today we're going to find out with my sister here. And um, I think what brings this aspect is people tend to confuse cultures with Islam, you know. There is culture and then there's Islam, as long as uh, most people Maybe some people who are practicing those actions showing that Islam is oppressing women and all that stuff are Muslims, but then they're following their culture instead of following Islam. So we're going to have um, a heated topic, you know, kind of some of examples with my sister here, and I hope you all benefit from that. So do you think there are cultures that actually portray a different image of Islam in regards to ambition and women? Yeah. Um... I talk about my culture. Uh -huh. So we have this issue of um, education. Yes. So uh, mm, my mom explained to me that long time ago, uh, like women in our culture, the legal culture, did not have the opportunity to pursue education. Yes. And this is because they thought that by exposing women to 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 out there to go and study, uh, they could acquire values that are not right. They could uh, become big-headed, if I could, <laughs> if I can say it in, in in that way. So, basically, when a girl turned puberty, they would celebrate it and look for the oldest man in the village and marry her off to the old man. So, the story of education was never there for the girl child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, another way is when we look at the waiting period a woman stays when her husband dies. So there's this culture in my community where your husband dies and that means you have to stay for, according to, to my community, you stay for 40 days. According to Islam, you stay for 4 months and 10 days. So in, in, in that period of, of, of 40 days, a woman is not allowed to, uh, to get sunshine. A woman is not allowed to interact with people. A woman is just supposed to be in her house for 40 days. Like she does not get any vitamin. She does not see anyone. Regardless of who she is. Regardless of who career wise or anything. Exactly, wise. exactly. And there's a certain day where a woman is not supposed to communicate to people until a certain time. Mm -hmm. She has to put on white clothes on Friday. She has to put on white clothes. She has to sleep facing upwards from morning until Juma is over. So people think that this is Islam, but this is not Islam. A woman in her in her either can go to work. She can pursue her. She can pursue education. She can do all that stuff as long as she is within the boundaries that she's allowed to be in. Yes, yes, that's true. And, you know, it's uh, it's very encouraging that Islam actually does show us that women are allowed to pursue education. They can be in business. They can be in political and social endeavor as long as it's within the boundaries of Islam. And, <clears throat> and also, a woman will also retain her identity even after marriage. You see, that shows us that a woman still will have to like can achieve something on her own you know and i think we should see some of the examples from uh, the great muslim scholars who are women who are our role models as muslims in terms of education business wise medical professions and all that stuff okay on the part of education zaitun this uh this hadith where the professor Wasallam says uh and it's mentioned that, 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 mean? <clears throat> that um, seeking knowledge has been obligated, has been made obligatory for the man and the woman. 
So this shows that there is no way you can deny a girl education in the name of Islam. So those who are denying girls out there to seek knowledge, those these are people who are doing it for their own interest and not for the sake of Islam. Oh, okay, that's nice to know. Anyway, so you know, with the she reminded me of something regarding. Okay, I'm not talking about the education part of it. I'm talking about the fact that people during before Islam, people used to get rid of female children because they are believed to not achieve anything and yet Islam has given a woman the rights to achieve so many things that are not there before that. Mm-hmm. And speaking of uh, such a thing, I would like to, my sister here, tell us about the business wise. Like, can I as a woman own a business? Am I allowed to go into entrepreneurship and pursue whatever field I want to pursue? Okay, that's a very interesting um, question right there. So when we look at the time of the Prophet وسلم, we have the greatest businesswoman in the household of the Prophet وسلم, and this is our mother, Lady Khadija anha. She is a businesswoman and she's married to the Prophet وسلم. And let's let's see how the uh, uh, Khadija's business really helps in, in spreading Islam. We are told that she supported the Prophet like uh she gave off her wealth to 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 sponsor battles when where people were going to, to battles she also used her wealth to help people get married mm-hmm. like when you want to get married and you don't have the the means to do it khadija radiallahu anh will help people do that so we also see the 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 importance of women being involved in business and the Prophet didn't deny Khadija radiallahu anha to do business. Another example, we look at the the time of the of the the time of Khalifa Omar radiallahu anhu. We see this woman, what was her name? Shafa bin Abdullah. Oh, yeah, Shafa bin Abdullah. So Shafa bin Abdullah. So Shafa bin Abdullah was appointed by by Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anha as the supervisor of, of the bazaar. Yes, at so the business place. Yeah. Okay. So we see that Islam actually allows women to be in business as long as they know their limits, as long as they wear their hijab, as long as they wear their hijab in how they talk to people. And when we talk about hijab, we are not just talking about women. Hijab has also been obligated to men. Mm-hmm. It's the only <laughs> difference is that <clears throat> We have, uh, there is a difference in how we cover ourselves. But there are some things that we share when it yes. comes to hijab, like the issue of us not wearing tight clothes. It's yes. both, both of us. We shouldn't be wearing tight clothes. We shouldn't be wearing transparent clothes. Yeah, and, and so on and so forth. That's, that's, that's very encouraging to know, you know. We have someone who was, someone who was very close to the Prophet Sallallahu And she's doing great, she is helping people, and she's a woman, and she's still a Muslim. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very encouraging, actually.